So section 3.3 is solving right triangles, and this is where it kind of all comes together. So when you're asked to solve, and you're given a triangle like this, you basically need to find all sides and all angles. So it's kind of up to you where to begin. Let's start with this angle up here, angle 1. If I'm to find, oops, if I'm to find angle 1, you have to notice that all the angles in a triangle have to add up to what? Well, they add up to 180. So what you would do is you would start with 180, subtract off the angles that you know. The first one we know is down here, which is 90. It's a right triangle. The next one we know is the one over here, which is 28. So minus off the 28. And we're left with 62. So angle 1 equals 62. Actually, I'm going to move that over a bit. So angle 1 equals 62 degrees. The next thing we want to find is one of the sides. So let's go with this side up here. We'll call it x. So for side x, you have to look at what you're given and figure out which trig function you're going to use, either sine, cosine, or tan. So I would probably look at from my angle, 28 degrees, I have this side over here, which is the opposite, and x is my hypotenuse. So I'm going to be using, if you think of your so toa, I'm going to be using sine because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And I have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So x is going to be equal to, or rather sine of my angle, which is 28, is going to be equal to my opposite, which is 13, over my hypotenuse, which is x. So to continue and to solve this, I would do multiplying by x first to get rid of it on the bottom. Multiply this side by x. And then I would divide by sine 28 and divide 13 by sine 28. So x is going to be equal to 13 divided by sine of 28. I'm not going through all the steps, I'm kind of showing you them just because we've done these uh, a bunch before. So I would figure out what sine of 28, or I could just take 13, 13 divided by, and I'm going to use brackets, 28 sine, end my brackets, which is equal to 27.7. So 27.7 is the side length for x. Next one we have is the side length for y, which is down here. Now for y, you can do it a couple ways. I could use 28 degrees, and I could use the fact that this is the adjacent, and then I have the opposite, and then I could use tan. Or you can use Pythagorean theorem, where a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's kind of up to you. I'll use Pythagorean theorem just so you can see how that kind of works as well. So if I have the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse, and a and b are the other two sides, then I would have a we'll call 13, so 13 squared, plus b squared I don't know, because that's the other, that's my y, so we'll call it y squared, is equal to my hypotenuse, which was 27, 0.7 squared. So you figure out what these are. 13 squared should be 169 plus my y squared, I don't know, equals 27.7 squared is 767.3. And finally, I have to subtract 169 subtract 169, so minus 169, whoops, so I have 767.3 minus off my 169, which is 598.3, so y squared is equal to 598.3, and then remember in order to solve for y, because I have y squared, you have to square root it square root both sides. So I have 598.3 there. I would just hit my square root button, which is over here. 
I get 24.5. So I have my length for y, I have my length for x, and I have my angle, which I had to find. That's the first question. Next question here, we'll go through one more example. <clears throat> I'm not given an angle this time. So again, I would probably figure out what an angle is first, or you could figure out your side. It doesn't really matter. So let's figure out our side first, the side over here. Again, I can use Pythagorean theorem because I'm given the other two sides, right? In this case, I'm going to actually start off with c squared. So I'll have c squared minus my a squared is equal to my b squared. It's just another, I'm just rearranging the formula algebraically before I go through it. So c squared is 16 squared minus 8.9 squared is going to be equal to my other side squared. So 16 squared is 256 minus, I'm going to use brackets, 8.9 squared equal 176.8. That's equal to b squared. And then remember, I find b by taking the square root. And the square root cancels with the squared. So I have 176.8. I take the square root, and I get 13.3. So I'm done one part, 13.3. OK, now let's find an angle. Let's start with this angle up here. We'll call it angle 1. So for angle 1, because I have all the sides, I can use either sine, cosine, or tan. It doesn't matter which one, but just pick one. Um, let's just go from angle one, and let's use this side here, which is the opposite, and this side here, which is the adjacent. I'm not going to use the hypotenuse. So opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I have tan of angle one equals my opposite, which is 13.3 over my adjacent, which is 8.9. So remember how to solve for angles. We go in our calculator. We take 13.3 divided by 8.9. I get 1.5. And to solve for the angle, I have to use the inverse. And we're dealing with tan. So I press the tan. So I get the tan negative 1. And I get 56.2. So angle 1, and how, I, how did I do that again? I used the inverse, of, um, the inverse of tan, and that's equal to 56.2. Good. Now I have a side, an angle. All I need is my other angle down here, which is angle 2. And remember, to find the angles, I start with 180, and I subtract off what I have. I know I have this 90 degrees here, and I have the angle I just found, which was 56.2. So I have 180 minus 90, which is always going to give me 90, and then minus 56.2 leaves me with 33.8. Angle 2 equals 33.8 degrees. So that is solving for triangles. When you're solving, you need to find all the sides and all the angles. OK, here's some hints for the quiz. So the first, uh, there's one question on the quiz that asks you for the height of the balloonist. And it gives you the angle of depression. Angles of depression do not give you the angle inside the triangle. They give you the angle outside the triangle. So to find the angle inside the triangle, the one in here, you have to note that from the horizontal line, it's going to be a 90 degree angle. They give you the angle of depression, so you always have to subtract from 90 degrees. So I start with 90. I subtract off my 53 point, whoops, 53.8. get 36.2. So that is my angle inside the triangle. Then I can go ahead from that angle and I can label my two sides. I have the opposite and the adjacent. I'm going to be using tan of my angle, which is 36.2, equals opposite, which is 110. 
over my adjacent, which we'll call the height. From there, you should be able to solve for the height. Keep in mind that the height is on the bottom. So you're going to have to do what? Multiply it up first. Second one is we have these two buses here. And the two buses, we're supposed to figure out how far they've traveled from the one location to the other. And it says the angle has changed from 46% or 46 degrees to 22 degrees. Again, these are angles of depression. They do not give you this, the angles inside the triangle. So you actually have two angles here that you will have to find. You have the first angle here is 46 degrees. So the complement of that would be inside. And to find it, you would have to take 90, subtract off 46, and you're left with 44. You're given the height of the building, which is 100. And you need to find out how far that they've traveled. So you're actually looking for, whoops, let me see here, let me color code this. You're actually looking for this distance here. Okay? But if you find this distance here, <clears throat> the distance from 44 degrees, which is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So I have tan again of my 44 degrees is equal to opposite, I don't know, so we'll call that O over my adjacent, which is 100. And that will give me the opposite, the length there. Notice, again, I had to subtract from 90 because I'm looking from the horizontal. The next one I have is this 22 degrees. Again, you got to subtract from 90, so 90 minus 22 is going to be 68 degrees. So that's the angle inside the triangle, and that's from here all the way to there is going to be, what do we say, 68 degrees. So if I get rid of these ones now, get rid of that because you don't really need it anymore. And that's the angle of depression to the second bus. So 68 degrees, if I use my opposite, over my adjacent. Again, I'll be using tan. This time I'm looking at my 68 degrees is going to be equal to, we'll call this one O2 over my adjacent, which is still 100. I'm going to be finding the distance all the way across. So the first distance I found was just from here to there. The second distance I'm finding is all the way across. So basically what you want to do is you want to take the all the way across distance, subtract off your first distance, and you'll be left with just the distance that you want, which is how far the bus is. So you have to solve for this O. We'll call this O1. You have to then solve for this O. We'll call that O2. And then basically just subtract the two distances. Keep in mind, again, angles of depression don't give you the angle inside the triangle. They give you the angle outside the triangle. So hopefully that will help you with that quiz.